Hello there and welcome to the new Tableau dashboard tutorial and in this Tableau dashboard tutorial I will show you a social media dashboard, the Twitter dashboard that you can create if you have this type of a requirement where you are working in an agency or or a, uh, you know really uh, inspired by the tweets of let's say celebrity or you know the person that you follow you can basically create a dashboard and and you know create a visualization for that also the main impact or the main thing what i want to show here is the design the look and feel the different types of charts that even you can create not just in the social media dashboard but for your own business dashboard so that's main idea behind it as to how to create these different look different good looking visualization so that in the end you have a good functional dashboard that you can show to your users so what i will show you is the where the data is present what's inside the data and finally the visualization during the visualization i will talk about uh, uh, the different ways in which you can transform your visualization and i will encourage you that when i will show that you take that step and try to see how you can you know further uh, improve your visualization by choosing a different type of chart and then uh, we will move on with the some tips and tricks as well as some interview question as and when it will come i will be explaining that so all in all that's what uh, i will going to show you in this uh, step by step tutorial and i hope you will going to like it so with that let's get started all right so here i am on the website data.world and in that i am here on the rwft real world fake data what it has is basically your a uh, new community project to curate amazing examples for our, from the tableau community for real world application so this is pretty good uh, and uh, you know one of the best way you, by which you can really experiment uh, with a real world data set not exactly but uh, similar to that and then you can create a data set so earlier i showed you an example of financial consumer complaint which i took an inspiration from a, you know from a tableau public and showed you how you can recreate that visualization um this time what i am doing is picking up a social media dashboard uh, the social media uh the data set and then uh, creating a visualization on that so that's what i will going to talk about and uh, where is the data well let me bring you the data set okay so here is the data set where you have the tweet the id when this tweet was made and what was the time at that point in time and you can see that uh, this is 30th june at uh, 9 pm this is 5 pm this is close to 5 pm around 2 pm so it has date and time information uh, how many impression uh, that you have got when you have uh, tweeted it that means to uh, you know n number of places where it was shown and how much was the engagement like people clicked on that retweeted that so it's all engagement and the engagement ratio uh, here it shows about uh, all these different pieces uh, whether person uh, engaged by uh, retweeting it replying it liking it uh, visit the uh, user profile url click if there was a url if there is any hashtag then clicked on the hashtag uh, if the tweet is big enough they clicked on the details uh if there was a perma link then it, whether it was clicked on that app was opened install uh follows if the follows is something uh that was being followed after the tweet email tweet if somebody email tweet dial the phone media views that's that's an important one where like how many media views that has happened and media engagement that has happened based on the tweet so as you can see it has a lot of good numerical information and uh, we will going to analyze uh, some of the numerical information from this uh, by creating a dashboard okay so the dashboard so where is this here i have the dashboard as you can see it's a clean layout of the uh, of the various different metrics that we can show i am right now showing a uh, you know very simple uh matrix as you can see uh, along with the area chart and then we have uh, some more additional information like top n tweets so these are nothing but the top, top 10 tweets and then whether it is top 
by URL clicks or by the media engagement or by the engagement or by the likes all of that something what we are showing and accordingly we are showing the number that you got 2487 like 137 like 114 like on this particular tweet so that will be easy for someone to quickly glance through as to what on which tweet you have got it and by this filter we should be able to filter the information um, then you have this calendar sort of a, a component over here which shows that uh, for a given month like September uh, in various different days in these various different weeks you have made the tweet so here a lot of tweets happen here the count of tweet here also the tweet a lot of tweet happens and you can change the tweets by coming over here and saying okay how is the August really looks like so if you are creating let's say a similar type of dashboard for your business and uh, something you want to see on which particular day the complaint complaint volume is high let's say you are creating a call center sort of a dashboard or su support sort of a dashboard where you are showing the support information the number of tickets that is coming the number of tickets that you are resolving so you can create this type of a calendar where you can have the color as an impact by showing that the in a, on what particular day most of the complaints are coming or you are resolving and things like those then you have these uh, what we have the tweet volumes by weekday so we have this data for around four or five months as you can see over here we have june july august september october so when we consider all of these months and uh, for a given weekday on which particular weekday most of the tweets are happening and looks like it is happening here on the uh, tuesday and the thursday so tuesday wednesday thursday is basically uh, 200 plus where tweets are happening and we are seeing that these has been the most popular day where the tweets have been happened by the or tweeted by the end user or the one who is really tweeting it um, then what we have is uh, information about uh, how many tweets someone did and uh, whether the details was expanded or not so we have this count of tweet and uh, the average uh, time the details have been opened is 10 right so this is something what uh, i have shown at the hours of time so looks like uh, around in the afternoon you know people are opening the tweets a lot and similarly sometime in the 7 pm in the evening so it's 0 to 23 it's all 24 hours and uh, basically show in a glance as to when the tweets are really being opened or details are really being expanded so that's the uh, overall information that i am showing but as you can see if i go back on this you have a couple of more um, like hashtag for example so there is still a scope where we can do further analysis where we can look at okay uh, if against the number of tweets how many hashtag clicks are really happening how many url clicks are really happening how many uh, permalink is being you is being uh, clicked right so these type of analysis is something very very uh, it can be useful when we look into the data uh, but on the dashboard sometimes on the dashboard we just we just try to show only the information that is more most meaningful um, so that's why i just kept it limited in a very simple layout as you can see on the left side we have the four kpi uh, supported by the four different views that we have and on the, on the top we can uh, control everything by this time except this one where for this i have the uh, different filter and similarly like this along with the date range you can control it by the top tweets or url clicks or any other information so how we can create this let me show you step by step in a very easy manner as to how uh, each of the component has been created if something is difficult then i will explain a little slow so that you can easily understand it okay so the first thing is uh, what we have is the total tweets so if we can click on this and we can come to this go to sheet or i can click over here on go to sheets so what i have is the total tweets as you can see and uh, here if i expand this what do i have is the 
is basically two different fields as you can see. Um, so the reason for this is that one is basically the area chart over here and another is the line on top of area chart so that it gives us sort of a shading effect and that's what I wanted uh, when somebody is viewing it. It's like a shade. So it just gives a nice and good look and feel um, when you are showing it to in your dashboard. So it's nothing but the dual axis chart that I am using and I have explained it many times uh, in my previous videos as well as to when you do a dual axis, uh, it basically creates uh, this type of effect. And then the color that I am and using is basically this one. If I click on more color and go to RGB, if you want to know what exactly the color value is, then this is the color value which is 3B9 FDC. So remember this 3B9 FTC is the color throughout I'm using um, in the dashboard. So that's that's the information I wanted to give. Then at the top I'm using the month information. So for each month the the what is the value and the top tweets the sorry the total tweets is here where sheet name is being used total tweet is basically the sheet name and that's what I've used it's tableau medium and formatting is 8 and the color that I'm using is the lighter version of black because I want to show it but do not want to have a lot of impact uh, when user is looking at it I want to have an impact on this one that's why you see that it's again tableau medium uh, the size is 18 and it is the uh, slightly darker version of the black that's the same setting is being done uh, in the total uh, in the average impression rate. Um, okay, uh, one more thing, yes, which is very, very important. So what will happen if I just create this and if I bring it over here? So we have this this sheet where you see that I'm using the uh, this particular detail fixed tweets count. Now, when you when I try to bring this fixed tweets count it shows me the information so generally i have to create or or when you will create it you will have to create this fixed tweet count and you can see for each of the kpi i have created this fixed lod value so what it what it is and why we need to create it right and then it can be an interview question as well so what happens why we need it is i will show you with the impact so over here, what I have is basically the time and let's keep it like a month and then we put the and we say count surrounded by count. Okay. So what we get is this chart and I will just put it entire view. If you want, you can just right click over. You can come over here, right click and say exclude. That way you have the proper value. I think I have not done it over here. I can even do it here in case if I want to remove the null value. Now, when I have this, right, so I have count of tweets. So I can, to have the impact like total sheet, uh, the total tweets, uh, we can say new total tweets. And that's what I get it here. Similar way I have used the title over here total tweets so that's what i was going to do and show you, i'll show you the impact what it will going to have so total tweets is here i will put it in a center i will press enter and click on insert and i will say count of tweet generally what i need is basically the total tweet count right so if i click apply you will see that you don't get one just a single number which i was getting it over here 1181 as a as a kpi number or as a number which you want to show it to your user but what you get is 1812312 because we are showing this monthly information and it's basically saying that tweets are going from 181 to 312 so how would you correct that it can be an interview question it can be a question you know which which your interviewer is asking or even you are struggling with that if you are creating your own dashboard so how do you correct that well what I did is I created this fixed tweet count. So if I just show you over here and click on edit. So fixed count of tweet. So what I'm saying is I don't want to take any dimension. Just give me the total count, right? That's what I want. 
So, I, when I put this on a detail, now this is accept, accessible inside this. So, if I double click over here again and remove this, click insert and I have the sum of fixed to each count and I click apply and I get my number. And that's the setting I have done everywhere. Okay. So, that's what you are seeing it over here. An important thing I wanted to show you by properly, uh, you know, showing you step by step right from why we need it to how to achieve it. Now, next thing, average impression rate. So, average impression rate, as you can see, again, the same settings where we have the sum of impressions and uh, we can we can basically create this area chart and this is the same setting if you see same color coding and same uh, type of formatting that we have done same type of color that i have chosen and uh, it's again the fixed impression rate over here fixed impression fh and click over here so this is the same earlier we had the count of tweet now we have the average of impression and that's what we are getting it over here right now the next is your um, engagement rate which is 6.65 percent again uh, this is something by picking up this engagement rate uh, we have as a field this is the field as an engagement rate and we are creating the fixed engagement rate that i have put it over here and as you can see uh, is the same way you have the engagement rate as the title and the fixed engagement rate as your value and showing that's here in the uh, in the month of July you have the highest one then we have the media engagement and uh, same settings we have the media engagement as a field and that's what I've used over here to find the average media engagement then we come to our first chart so these are the four kpi i just wanted to quickly show one in detail and then rest of the others step by uh, you know walk through you as to what what has been done where is the field um, the next is the top 10 tweets or i can basically say top 10 tweets okay so what's what's really going on over here is we have these one two three four five six seven eight nine ten as a rank the tweets as a value and then the uh the one parameter and the calculated field which is going on here so how do you start this well first of all you need to choose uh the value that you want to show dynamically in this chart right so you want to show likes engagement media clicks url even you can show like uh, expand or other you know values which are present over there but once you have this parameter created top tweet by if i show you the parameter setting click go in edit you will see that the the name of the uh, parameter is top tweets by just so that it is user friendly when we are showing it in the front end it has to be the uh, data type as a string and it needs to be a list and then your values should be here so this is the value which we will validate in the back end and this is the value we want to show it in the front end to the user so remember this piece which is very important this is on the left side the value which you want to validate in the back end and this is the value that you want to show it to your user in the front end so once you have this top tweets by what we need to do is create a calculated field to show the impact over here so we have the show top tweets by so if i show you this calculated field and the cal parameter and calculated field you can create it from here we i have just shown you the parameter settings now i will show you how you can create calculated field so once you click on the create calculated field what you are going to get is a window like this if i go in this edit mode this window where you need to first provide the title show top tweets by and then here with the case statement we are taking the values from here so case and the parameter name top tweets by and sorry uh, case top tweets by and then when likes that means when the user is selecting likes then show the field likes where is the like here it is right this is the field name that we are picking 
Similarly, when user select URL clicks, then show the field URL clicks. There is the URL clicks down here. This is the field which is here in this orange. When user select media engagement from here, then show the media engagement. Media engagement is present here. And similarly, when engagement user select, then show the engagement field, this one. So this is the setting which is going on here. Show top tweets by, and you can see that this is something which I am uh, showing it over here. So if I click OK, all right. So now uh, along with this, what's what another thing that is going on is basically two different uh, uh, things. One is the uh, the highest tweet selection and the measure values. So what I will do is I will just show you the entire configuration because it also has ranks and everything and that will become little difficult for you as to what's really going on. But I'll show you the rank. Rank is not, not exactly the rank, uh, but it is basically the index. So if I just come over here and click on edit, it's nothing but the index function. What it gives me is basically the index values like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 so that I can filter it over here. In edit filter, I can just keep the top 10, right? And I can change it if I want. But for now, I just thought of uh, from a dashboarding side that 10 is, I think, a good value that I can keep. But we can make it dynamic this as well. How you can make it dynamic? Uh, think about it. I have shown in one of my videos as to how you can select or how you can make this dynamic. Okay, so this uh, this is something what I will do is create one more new worksheet. So in the new worksheet, uh, first of all, what we need is basically highest tweet by selection. Okay, so what's going on over here is this is an additional field that you need to create. And this is a field where some calculation is going on. We will start by the uh, the last one. Okay, and before I show this, the whole idea is that you have this line which is constant, right? So we need to find this line based on whatever user is selecting. Okay, so user, whatever user is selecting is coming over here. That's the connection I have shown you already. Now we need to identify the maximum value of this, this particular uh, field. So the maximum value is the first one, right? The 428 over here. So if you see the highest tweet for each value, it is 428. So that's the maximum value I need to identify for any given category. So for this, what, what calculation I need to do in a calculated field is this one. If I write, if I click over here and go into edit, sum of show top tweets by so show top tweets by is taking the value from parameter and showing you the field. Then we are saying that fixed it at tweet level because, sorry, fixed it at tweet level because that's what that we are showing the tweets. And once we have the uh, sum of top tweets, then we are finding out of the all the tweets that we are having what is the maximum value based on the user selection. So for example, if user is selecting like, so you have the, you once you will plot, or if you have seen that, you will have the list of all the tweets along with the count sum of like. And what we are doing is finding the maximum value out of that as a single value. And we are keeping it fixed. That means by no dimension, that means it will always be the one value that we will going to get in the front end. Let me know if it is confusing. I have shown it in a previous video as well. The previous dashboard video, if you have not seen that, I, I highly encourage you to look at that. So uh, once you have this, what you need is highest tweets by selection. This will be one single value, right? So what I will show you is tweets, add all members. You see that it will always be the highest sorry, the always be constant, right? And that's why we are able to create that line impact. And then once we have this, then what I do is I put the rank 
before this. So what it gives me is just the numbering 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 up till end, right? And I can then filter to, sh first of all, uh, before I do that, I what I need to do is I need to uh, also pick the tweet or not the tweet, but the measure values. Okay. So once I have this, the measure values, what I need is in this measure name, click on edit filter, say none. We need uh, show top tweets, this field, because we want to show the actual tweets on top of this. So we need this one and just one more dummy field like URL clicks. You can click anything. I will remove the URL click in a minute. But what I need is another, another additional dummy field is sum of zero. Many of you have asked me as uh, why we need this sum of zero, right? So this is basically needed to create an impact that from where the value will start and up till what end the value will go. So value is starting is here and this is the maximum end point. So what we do usually is uh, in this case, you have this measure name. What we do is we select basically the line and we put the measure names on the path. So the measure name is nothing but this and this. So starting from here, going all the way till end. And that's what we get starting from here, going all the way till the end, right? So once we have this, all of this value and this tweet and everything. Now the next thing is we need to do some sorting, okay? So the sorting is basically on the tweet. So if I click on sort, it's not the data sort order, but it needs to be a field. And the field is your show top tweets by, and it needs to be ascending. Okay. So once we have this, we know uh, what, what we are showing it over here. And then once we have this, uh, we can we can click over here and click on dual axis okay as soon as we click on dual axis you will see that line is present over here which we need to increase the size a little bit okay and over here we change this to a bar so over here we have to reduce this Yeah, this one is good. This much is, I think, okay. And we increase this further as much as we want. So like this, we are we have got the same effect. So if I choose the color, uh, first of all, for the bar uh, over here, I have this color. And then for line also, I need to choose the color. The only thing is for the bar, I can come back to color and reduce the opacity. Okay. And then it's all formatting. So we right click, click on format. And over here, we just say rows, columns, none. Um, and we don't need any zero line. Okay. And so these are all the row lines and everything. So we don't need any of these. If I go to this sheet, we don't need row divider. So it's gone. And uh, we don't need the column divider. And this is a zero line. So if I go again here in the grid, in the lines and in the column and zero line, none. So now the zero line is also gone. I will just right click here and synchronize access and again right click and uncheck the show header. Okay. Now what I can do is I can click here and click on filter. Just say none and only select 10 values. Once I select this and click OK, you will see only the 10 values, right? Now what I need is basically this one show as a parameter and whatever will be 
the selection it will be changing the value accordingly the last piece is that you have these values which is nothing but the sum of show top tweet so we will bring it this here and convert it into discrete and you have the value all right so that is probably the uh, the chart which uh, something you you may want to create because there are like a couple of things which is going on and i and i know you know when you when you are learning on a very first time it will be slightly difficult so just wanted to show you step by step what you need to do um the next thing is uh, creating this this particular um chart and it is very very easy what you see is based on the two values which is uh, weekday and week time so weekday is nothing but uh, once you bring the time on to the columns you need to go in and uh, from the default value whatever it is showing go to the more and uh, over here you need to select the weekday and i have the custom because i have it will show you the entire name like sunday monday tuesday the entire name but what i have done is i have right clicked over here and clicked on format and uh, over here we have i have chosen the uh, abbreviation from here in the date section that way it has it's basically become the custom over there now uh, for the second uh, row as well you will bring the time okay and you will going to choose this time the week number right it will distort or it will create some uh, you know different visualization but not like this the only thing that you need to do is change this to discrete it will be continuous so you need to change this to discrete and you will have the setup like this where you will change the default visualization to circle and you on the color what you have is the uh, count of tweets so when you bring the tweet over here or you just what you can do is even you can write like this count tweet and when you click this you have the option of choosing it color and you know what color you need to choose right it's the same thing what i have chosen over here as well by clicking over here and putting the same value slightly different from what i showed you earlier but kept keep it the same one which i uh, mentioned it okay so that way you can create this tweet by day and week chart and i'm using this filter month time so when you bring the time on to the filter choose the month right if i bring it probably again here choose this month and click next and you will be having the value like this one month and show it in the front end and then what you have is the uh, tweet volume by weekday so it's basically a lollipop chart which i have shown a couple of times previously as well it's nothing but the dual access chart as you can see the count of tweet and the count of tweet uh, one tweet is basically your bar over here and another one is basically the circle and the uh, only thing is the the setting that circle needs to be slightly big and the bar need to be slightly less and we need to change it based on the dashboard setting because in the dashboard if you see the lines are pretty thin so that is based on a little bit back and forth process of uh, making sure that we are getting the right value another thing is showing the value inside this so in the circle enable the label and what i have chosen is the vertical and the middle as an assignment where it should place the value and what you are getting is 239 215 230 and whatever information is so that's basically is what is a very simple setting very simple dual access chart you bring two fields make it dual access make one as bar another as circle and you will get the output um tweet details again uh, it's a it's a different type of chart as you can see so what's basically going on over here is the count of tweet the total count of tweet and then average of detail expand now obviously the detail of expand uh, cannot be more than the tweet right so in that case what i have done is uh, i have taken the average of this and imposed it or put it on top of the tweet 
So it's like we have 54 tweet, but uh, it got on an average expanded by 10.87 or almost like 11. We can change it to uh, 11 as well. So what, how we are doing it is basically first we bring the hour and tweet and then we bring the measure values over here, right? And once we bring the measure values, what it gives is measure names, the filter. Make sure you do the edit filter and remove everything. Just keep the two values, one which you absolutely needed like average detail expand. And the second one will be your sum of zero like I just showed you here in this chart. In this chart, I've shown you there. So the same thing you need to do and then make it a dual access. Once you have the dual access, slight settings you need to do like for bar, you need to choose the gray color like I have done it over here on the count of tweet. And uh, for the line, because we have to put the measure name on the path, as you can see, uh, we need to choose the color, which is the relevant one in this case, like this one. So with this, we will have this beautiful looking visualization. Everything is created properly. And then in the dashboard, it's all about arranging it. So we have a lot of different mechanism in which we can really, really, uh, you know, utilize as to what we really need to do. For example, we can have horizontal. I have shown you many times. We can have vertical uh, as I have shown here. So this time I have gone uh, with the vertical on the KPIs so that uh, because these are all the area charts and everything. And then the four sections over here and everything is in floating. So what usually whenever you create a new dashboard, if let's say if I click it over here, dashboard, you have two options. You want tiled or you want floating. Tiled is basically pretty tight where you have to have the horizontal vertical container and you need to bring everything inside that. But for this dashboard, I have chosen the floating one, this one. So what happens with floating one? It gives me the entire flexibility as to wherever I want to put everything I can put it. So what I have done is I have bring total tweets, total new tweets, uh, average impression rate and media engagement over here and just make sure with the help of the layout, I have the X, Y and width and height position like how much width and how much height I needed. For example, if you see width, height for this one and I want to keep it same. So it basically gives me this entire flexibility and let me just show you what I mean by that. So this is the dashboard. Let me show you the tiles. So if I bring the total tweets here, what it does is it gives, it basically uh, put take the entire space and then when I bring the new one, I can put it wherever I want like this one. But what happens if I create a new dashboard, uh, sorry, the new dashboard and keep it floating. In this case, I bring the total tweets and you can see that it is a floating object, right? So that's why, because the floating style has been chosen. So that's why I can keep it wherever I want. And then I can bring the another one and I can keep it wherever I want. I can keep the third one. I can keep it wherever I want. That's basically what's going on over here. I don't have to really be super strict with the uh, with the tiled view with all the containers. And uh, it's a different way of how you can really create the dashboard. And then I have simply brought all of these values over here, uh, the chart and make sure this this value is properly placed here. It will be shown by default. Uh, changed few settings. For example, for this title, this is nothing but the text object. If I double click, you will see that it is a text object and text object is present over here. The background, I have not changed the, the, the background of overall this white, which is present. So what I thought is let, let's keep it white as it is, but for the objects, I want to keep it slight gray. So I select the object, go into the layout and in the background, I have chosen this one, the first lightest shade of gray. Same is the case of this one. You will see that background is the lightest one. But over here, for the uh, for one part, I think uh, if I select this, yeah, as you can see, uh, when you select the gray right over here, 
only the title part changes not the uh, sheet where the area is present so what you need to you may need to do is you may need to right click over here go into the format come here in the shading and over here in the sheet you need to choose this gray color if you will not choose what will happen is like this you will have this gray and you will have this as white but we want both so i have chosen this one and that way i have made all of my chart uh, one by you know making sure all the titles are like great with the help of this background color and then i have right clicked on every component go to format shading sheet and then the same light gray and that's the same setting i have done for arranging the visualization uh, which you can see is going over here uh, the time is is the one filter which i have kept it i think uh, over here somewhere in in one of the visualization you can put it like in the total tweet or somewhere and the only setting which you need to do is come over here click on apply to worksheet and uh, you you can mention then all using this data cells so that way it will have an impact on the all the visualizations right so that way whenever you will change you will see that all your visualizations are changing okay so that's what i wanted to uh, show it to you as to um, how you can how you can really do this uh, if you need this template uh, the the instruction is present in the comments as to what you need to do to get this template i am helping you you need to help me a little bit uh, and and get this template and uh, yeah i hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and this new design uh, that i have uh, i have shown it to you uh, let me know if you have any questions or let me know if you want me to uh, you know create a different design which probably you have seen somewhere uh, i'll be more than happy to take a shot at it and uh, create one for you all right so that's about it and i'll meet you in the next video with a new topic